Hello everyone, it's October 10th, 2017. It's Tuesday. It's Harp Tuesday! And today I'm continuing my, my look at the gear that I use to create Harp Tuesday and music videos in general and giving you an idea of, of some suggestions that you might, uh, might use to create your own videos. So in this case, maybe not just videos, but CDs or recordings, music recordings. So today I'm going to be talking about audio and the audio options that, that I use. Um, again, just like cameras, there's a dizzying array of, of options out there, right? Oh, it can be overwhelming. And again, I'm not a, a recording engineer. These are just the options that I happen to use. So first of all, I'll talk about my, my sort of my good recording setup. So I have a Royer SF12 ribbon mic. I can't hold it up to show it to you because I'm using it right now, speaking to it as we, as we talk. Um, I guess I could get it in the picture, but I don't want to move it now. It would, might cause some, some uh, pain to your eardrums. Anyway, this Royer SF12, it's a ribbon microphone, it, fantastic sound. So I've had it for, for many, many years. I guess I got it in 2001 and, um, uh, and actually recorded all my CDs with this or with a, a precursor to this. Um, fantastic mic. I, 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 love, I love the sound. I love how it records the harp. And the harp can be a challenging instrument to record. And uh, so the only downside is it's, it's quite expensive. Um, it's it's a, actually a stereo mic. So there's actually two microphones at uh, 90 degrees to each other. So you get a stereo effect with it, which is kind of cool. And uh, people have, for example, recorded orchestras just with a single microphone. It's a fantastic microphone. Um, I don't know what the actual price is, but I, I think at least 3,000 US these days. Um, so it's a fairly hefty price tag. Royer actually just came out with an intriguing looking uh, $500 option ribbon microphone, though it's a, just a mono microphone. So you might want to end up getting like a matched pair you're still looking at a thousand dollars there, um, and I I I haven't I don't have any experience with it. I don't know how it records harps, but anyway, for me this has been a great solution. I don't have to think about it. I have this ribbon mic. I'm using a AEA the Ribbon Pre preamp. One of the one of the, sort of the challenges with uh, certainly the SF12 is the level that it the microphone produces is quite low, so you need to boost that level quite a bit, and you want a very clean boost. You don't want to be adding hiss as you boost it, and, and that can be a challenge. So uh, I, I'm, I'm reasonably happy with this Ribbon Pre, the Ribbon Pre um, by AEA, uh, specifically designed for, it's a preamp specifically designed for ribbon, ribbon mics. Um, uh, and, and, and again, this is just, this is my, this is my particular solution. Um, you might not f feel like at this point in time you want to go out and plunk down that amount of money for uh, for a recording solution. Um, so right now, for example, I'm running that, the ribbon mic, the SF12 into the preamp, and then that's going into the camera, the T4i um, that I'm recording this with. And uh, you, so, you, uh, uh, so another option that I have that I, I got somewhat recently, more geared towards travel, um, is this H5 Zoom recorder. And you, you may have run across the Zoom recorders. They, they, they've proved quite popular. They're handy little things. Um, and this, it, it has an output. It can function as a microphone. So for example, with a camera, and again, if we're looking at video, wanting to cook an external camera in, I can, I can take a cute little attachment like this, um, screw it into the bottom of this H5 zoom, 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 uh, recorder. And again, my brother's 70D that I'm borrowing to demonstrate looks very similar to the T4i that I'm using. Put that on. Now screw these, this one up, screw this one down. Sorry. Yeah. Kind of lock this in place to some extent. Uh, take our cable, ideally a smaller one, but I don't bother to get one right at the moment. Um, and plug that in, and there we are. So now 
we are yes yes there we go now we're running the signal from these microphones into the camera and and recording the audio on the camera uh, recording that audio into the camera instead of the camera's built-in microphone now Another good option for, for sort of on, on camera microphones, Rode is a very well respected name. Uh, and as I was researching things, I think uh, last year it was when I got this Zoom, that was also an option. So my thoughts in terms of getting the Zoom w was that it provides a little bit of extra utility up, up, above and beyond just being a microphone. So this is also uh, a recording system. So I could be re recording the audio in addition to sending the signal to the camera and the camera recording it. I can be recording it here, which is handy. Um, it actually can be quite handy. And, and again, maybe you just want to use this as a standalone audio recorder, which you can't do with a microphone. Um, and uh, that can be really handy as well. Again, these get used quite a bit. Um, this H5 is interchangeable. So there are, you can buy other microphones this is obviously a stereo uh stereo microphone um I'm trying to get it to focus on that there's two microphones um you can get various different attachments it also functions just as a recording device so you have two xlr inputs so i could plug my royer sf12 in here of course i don't know how the preamps would handle it but it would be okay or i could plug an xlr output from the um from my preamp into here and be recording with this. So again, great for sort of field recordings. Um, so I think, uh, again, so many options. I think this, if you're, if you're looking for better audio than your onboard camera and not wanting to spend t a ton of money, um, this might, something like this, whether it's the H5 or the H4N or whatever, or some Zoom, and again, too many options, too many options, uh, might, be, might be a good, option. I mentioned, I think, in the first episode that, of course, you could record your audio separately and merge them with the video later on in post-production on your computer. Uh, so in theory, that produces a better quality. Uh, I believe two, two factors are, are, are in play here. One is, and again, I'm not, I'm not a recording engineer, right? The, the, I believe that the, the camera will have some sort of built-in, potentially built-in uh, preamp or something that it will be doing to the sound. It's not gonna be, it's not uh, sort of audiophile grade quality. And if, 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 I'm, if I'm wrong about that, in any case, whenever we have a signal coming in, right, it, it, it's, it's, it's analog. And at some point it has to become digital. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to, but if, if we're putting on a computer and if, if we're putting on our digital camera, um, it's, it's got to become digital. So it gets converted, this uh, analog digital A slash D converter, in, and there are better and worse converters. So the one in your camera is probably not going to be amazing, whereas potentially, I mean, I'm using a, I'll talk about more about this in the next episode, but I'm using a RME babyface um, what a name, uh, audio interface for my computer. Um, so again, with a, with a dedicated audio recording setup, you can potentially get better sound. Now, for example, if you're using this, you could be recording the audio both on this and on the camera. And later on, you could see, is there an appreciable difference, right? Is this, and if there is, you can, you can use this. And if not, don't worry about trying to sync it up. Um, so syncing, syncing the audio with the video is something we'll talk about in the next episode. It can be really annoying, um, and it can be painless. Um, but I, I just find, again, it depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to do a, a really amazing, uh, music video, that's one thing. Maybe you're not even using the audio from those particular shots, right? Um, if you're trying to do something like Harp Tuesday, where... I'm not trying to be perfect. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to, uh, again, some heartening back to what I closed saying in last, last week's episode. It, my goal is to get something out there, right? It, it's to create something and I, I want to do it as well as I can, but I'm not looking for it to be necessarily perfect. So that 
one last step, right, of having to try to sync things together is a big bonus to be able to have that good quality audio from, from some sort of external microphone onto your camera, and there you go. Now you've got the audio and the video in one file. Very handy. Um, uh, I guess I'll close by suggesting that if you're overwhelmed by all these options, of course, you know, see, reach out to see if you have any, any friends have any suggestions. You might also see if your local music store rents audio equipment. I know here in Victoria, for example, Long & McQuaid, which is a Canadian-wide uh, music firm, uh, uh, they certainly rent audio equipment and you could potentially rent a microphone that you're interested in and for a fraction of the cost of the microphone and see what you think, whether, whether it's something you want to actually invest in. Again, do you really want to plunk in thousands of dollars without having tried it first? So yeah, as, as I say, so many options out there, right? Uh, but uh, I'm really happy with the, with the Royer SF12. The, the newest Royers are an intriguing looking option. And, and I've been happy with this H5. It's, it's certainly not the same quality as the Royer, but uh, it's not bad, it's not bad. So I'll close with that. Hope that was useful and I'll see you in two weeks time. Cheers. <laughs>